Welcome, everyone. It's good to be with everyone here in person, as well as those who are online or those who are watching this recording, whether on TV or on our YouTube channel. This service of prayers for healing reflects the belief that God's purpose for us is a life of wholeness, as expressed in the life and teachings of Jesus. The ministry of healing is an integral part of our Christian witness. We each stand in need of healing, but in this ministry, we also recognize the many dimensions of healing. The healing of divided communities and nations, the healing of the earth itself, have their place alongside the healing of broken bodies, hurt minds, and wounded hearts, including the hurts and divisions within ourselves. So, our prayers are complementary to the work of medicine and of other forms of healing, which are also channels of God's loving and transforming purpose. In our service tonight, we will be invited to name particular people, places, and situations we specifically offer to God in prayer. We do this because each person and situation is known to God, not as a problem to be solved, but as a focus for God's acceptance and love. We are not seeking to change God, but to change the world. We trust God, and our prayers will be answered. Although we do not know when or how healing will occur. Such healing may include a cure, but most likely involves a journey that is both inward and outward, both spiritual and social, and both individual and systemic. Such healing takes time, God's time. There will also be an opportunity for those who wish to come forward to receive or share in the ministry of the laying on of hands. This can either be for themselves or for another person or for a situation. In and through this, we affirm that the ministry of healing is not restricted to particular individuals but is a corporate inclusive process, the work of the whole Christian community in which we all have a part to play. God's healing purpose, the promise of God's fulfilling and sustaining love is for every one of us. Whether we choose to come forward or to remain seated in prayer and concern, God can use our presence in this service. So I would like to acknowledge the territory on which we are gathered and for which we have the privilege to gather. However, whenever you see red print in bold, it's for the worship leader, in this case myself, to read. And whenever it's in dark print, it's for all of us to read together. As the healing spirit flows and speaks to our hearts on this land, we acknowledge this day that we gather for worship on the traditional territories of the Saugeen Ojibwe and the other indigenous peoples who preceded them, the original nations of this land, and we acknowledge with respect their history, their spirituality, and their culture. Let's join together in the opening responses that you'll find on the screen. We gather here in your presence, God. In our need and bringing with us the needs of the world. We come to you, for you come to us in Jesus. And you know by experience what human life is like. We come with our faith and with our doubts. We come with our hopes and with our fears. We come as we are, because you invite us to come. And you have promised never to turn us away. Let's join together in the first hymn. Hymn number 780 and Voices United in the pews in front of you, or just follow the words on the screens for my soul finds rest in God alone.
help depends. Who is my fortress and my rock? Who sure salvation sends? My foes conspire to bring me down. They scorn my troubled state. Their lips are quick to sound my praise. But in their hearts they hate. Find rest, my soul, in God alone, on whom my hope depends. Who is my fortress and my rock? Who sure salvation sends? My aid and honor come from God, my refuge strong and sure. Now all you people trust in God, in whom we are. The great of earth are less than dust, all mortal strength is vain. And fools alone rely on wealth or prize ill-gotten gain. I know a God that strong and strong your love and word our every deed for good or ill you surely will reward the bible reading is luke Chapter 14, verses 1 to 6, from the paraphrase, The Message. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. Just then, in front of him, there was a man who had edema. And Jesus asked the experts in the law of Pharise and Pharisees, is it lawful to cure people on the Sabbath or not? But they were silent. So Jesus took him and healed him and sent him away. Then he said to them, If one of you has a child or an ox that has fallen into a well, will you not immediately pull it out on a Sabbath day? And they could not reply to this. Let's join together in prayer. Loving God, into this space, may your stories take root. May your will become ours. And may your path of wholeness be our path. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So the scripture passage that Mary just read this evening is actually one that we don't hear that often, really. It is a healing story of Jesus. But I want to set the stage first. Think about it. What exactly is happening here? Jesus has gone into the lion's den, so to speak. It's where all the Pharisees and the scribes and all the temple authorities are. We would call them the Sanhedrin because that's all the collection of the authorities in the temple in Jerusalem. And they were watching Jesus. They were paying close attention to Jesus because he was the local celebrity. He was the curiosity. And they wanted to see what was going to happen. It's kind of like inviting Kanye West to an, a party of all the wealthy and rich people. Not that 
Kanye isn't wealthy and rich, but you never know what he's going to do or say. Jesus was similar to that. And in the space, everybody who was watching Jesus may not have realized that Jesus was watching them back. <laughs> he knew what was going on. And there, in the midst of them all, was a man with edema. So, lots of swelling in his feet, in his joints. He was crippled up. He had trouble moving. He probably had a cane or some sort of support by which to walk around. And I'm willing to bet that he was one of those, you know how you have people in a party and they fade into the wallpaper? They kind of disappear. They're nobodies. And that's what this fellow was. Oh, I'm willing to bet he was probably part of the household of the host of this meal that Jesus was attending. And they knew that Jesus was a healer. That was his reputation. So they were wondering. Because you see, the other factor was, this was the Sabbath. So everything that was there for this feast had been prepared in advance before the Sabbath sunrise. That was to satisfy the law of Moses that you do not work on the Sabbath. And many, many rabbis over the centuries had made sure that those strictures and regulations got even more detailed and rigorous over time. And Jesus looked at them and said, okay, you've invited me here on the Sabbath. You have prominently allowed a member of the household who is ill, crippled. You know my reputation. Let me ask you, said Jesus, is it lawful for someone to heal on the Sabbath. In other words, if healing is work, then should I be allowed to do this work on the Sabbath, even though this work would appear to be God's work? Nobody responded. Because they were hoping and waiting to see if Jesus would actually do it. And Jesus did. And then he said, I want to give you an example of the kinds of minutia of rules that doesn't work for people, not the way that things have evolved over time. Because if you had an animal who had gotten lame, you would take it to try and heal it because you had compassion for the animal. And they had no response whatsoever. But here's the deal. What about that person that Jesus healed? I'm willing to bet that this person had been part of that household for years and years. After all, edema is not something that just kind of sneaks up on you and suddenly it's right there. <laughs> it takes time. So they would have known that this was happening. And nothing was done about it because they felt that nothing could be done about it. What it gave them was, you know, the neighbors would say, well, isn't that nice? They're keeping this man amongst them, feeding him, caring for him, even though he's worthless to the household. He can't work and, and do anything of any value, and yet they're willing to take on that burden out of the goodness of their hearts. Aren't they wonderful. And so the people of the household, these very powerful people, the people who were so busily in, involved in the Byzantine machinations of politics of the Jewish temple in those days, of trying to juggle what to do with the Roman occupiers to keep their people safe, ignored this one person this one person with whom they were very familiar, this one person that was part of their family household and did nothing because they had privilege. They had all the opportunities. They didn't have to worry. 
And so it didn't cost them really much of anything, and it gave them a good reputation to have this man there. And by Jesus healing the man of his edema, they no longer had the good housekeeping badge of approval. So the healing in this case that was really needed wasn't so much for the man who was suffering edema, but it was for everyone else in that room who were willfully ignoring the need, not just in their household, but all around them in their entire society, the inequities between the haves and the have-nots, the reality of trying to kowtow to Roman occupiers to the detriment of their very faith story. That's what Jesus was there to heal. So healing is more than just mind, body, or spirit. Healing is also one of systems, of societies, of cultures. I would pray that when we think of what we can do, instead of feeling helpless and throwing our hands up in the air and saying, well, you know, I don't want to risk my secure place in the world. I'll just ignore it. That instead, we look with compassion. Compassion meaning calm, which is with. Passion meaning suffering. With suffering. We go into that suffering with other people. And we walk that path with them. And perhaps in those relationships and in that reaching out one to each other, healing is ours for the asking. Amen. For the prayers of intercession that we will soon be offering, there will be a series of silences. During those silences, you are invited to name people, events, or groups, either silently or in your heart, or spoken aloud into the silence for all to hear and embrace. Each moment of silence will be completed by the words, May they know the deep peace of Christ. Immediately after those words, we will join collectively in singing the chant that you will see on your screens. As we practice that refrain now with David's leadership, let us first listen to the music and then join together in singing it. Let us pray as we now bring before God those for whom prayer is offered. Loving God, you share with us the care of creation and call each of us by name. We remember that those who encounter Jesus found acceptance, healing, and the possibility of new life. That the disciples, though imperfect human beings, through prayer and touch, helped others to find healing in the power of your Holy Spirit. And so in the name of the triune God, we hold in your healing presence those who suffer pain and ill health with their families, friends, and those who care for them. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen. 
listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Loving God, we hold in your healing presence those who suffer in mind and spirit and all those who care for them. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Loving God, we hold in your healing presence the suffering people of our world and the places where people are experiencing division, injustice, and violence. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Loving God, we hold in your healing presence those struggling to overcome addiction or abuse, those supporting and working with them, and all those whose suffering has distanced them from those who love. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Loving God, we hold in your healing presence those facing bereavement. We also pray for those who have died. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Loving God, we give you thanks for the health restored and prayers answered. We hold in your healing presence and peace those whose needs are not known to us. And those whose names we do not know but who are known to you and for whom we have been asked to pray.
And we name in our hearts those who are close to us. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. May your wisdom, God, guide nurses, doctors, and all those who work in every part of our health care system, here and those laboring around the world. We pray for those who work in rescue services on land, in the sea, or through the air, both in our cities and in the rural countryside. We pray all this in trust and in faith as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but rescue us from evil. For yours is the dominion and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At the end of the next song, if you wish to seek prayer for yourself on behalf of someone else or for a crisis or event in the world, you are invited to come and take your turn to kneel or to stand at one of the cushions in front of the communion table. Also, if you wish to share in the laying on of hands, whether in person or online, just hold up your hand toward that person or the screen, holding that person in the heart of prayer, laying on hands in effect from a distance. You may alternatively be, uh, choose to take part by remaining seated, joining in silent prayer during the laying on of hands. Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are troubled, and I will give you rest. So come, you who are burdened by regrets and anxieties, you who are broken in body or in spirit, you who are torn by relationships and by doubt, you who feel deeply within yourselves the divisions and injustices of our world. Come, for Jesus invites us to bring him our brokenness. Our song is As the Deer Pants for the Water, number 766 in Voices United, or just read the words on the screen. So my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. I want you more than gold and silver, only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long 
to worship you. You're my friend and you are my brother, even though you are my king. I love you more than any other, so much more than anything. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. Let us join together in prayer as we move, come forward for the laying on of hands as we lift prayers for healing. God, our creator, we are held in your everlasting arms. Jesus, our savior, we are healed by your wounded hands. Holy Spirit, be present as we reach out to one another in love. Loving God, may your spirit so move among us, moving within us to open our perception to your good creation, wounded, gasping for breath, poisoned and polluted, and ever running a fever. May your spirit be the healing power that lifts up within us the will to move, to decide, to act. Bless us as you bless us all to understand our interconnection and our interdependence in your name. Amen. And I would invite everyone to say together this refrain, both those of you online and everyone here in person. Spirit of the living God, present with us now, enter you body, mind, and spirit, and heal you of all that harms you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's join together in singing our final hymn, hymn number 182 in Voices United, Stay With Us Through the Night. Stranger 
till the morning breaks new bread. Watch now, dear Lord, with those who wake or watch or weep tonight and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend your sick ones, O Lord Christ. Rest your weary ones. Bless your dying ones. Soothe your suffering ones. Pity your afflicted ones. Shield your joyous ones and all for your love's sake. And now may the God of hope fill us all with joy and peace in believing that we may abound in hope in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For those of you online and for those of you here in person, feel free to stay as long as you feel the need.